Hello, this is Eileen, the environmental educator, and tonight we're going to talk about um, th this man and the the newest exposure he did today. And is, is it really as grand as they're proclaiming it to be? And is it as grand as what they're censoring from the world? So, and who was their real target here and their real incentive? So let's just um, hear from God himself, and then we'll hear from the whistleblower a little bit, and then I'll play these again with some analysis, and, and then we'll throw some other tidbits into it. So here we go. L listen up, because God, God himself, who the world has to answer to, but this man doesn't answer to anything, he, he's, he's about to talk here. In journalism, this is one of the most difficult stories we've ever had to tell. This is one of those stories that you never want to hear or report on because it's so unconscionable. It should never happen in civilized society. But tragically, it does. This story involves a man who is currently engaged and living with his fiancee and her three young children, and his sexual fantasies about the eldest daughter, who is in her early teens. Now, we don't usually report on someone's private sexual fantasies, and while we were told a crime is yet to be committed, we couldn't take the chance. Our source is very concerned that he might eventually act out on his fantasies, so we verified the information as best we could and took it to the relevant authorities as quickly as possible. Coming on the heels of last week's arrest of CNN producer John Griffin on multiple counts of trying to elicit unlawful sexual activity with minors, the subject of our story is another CNN producer whom had an ongoing relationship with our source for over a decade. When the source came to us, we had some reservations about her history as a former sex worker, which makes her an easy target for anyone who wants to discredit her. But after spending time with her and vetting the photographs, texts, and FaceTime videos she showed us, we felt compelled we had a duty to take action to protect the children who were involved. Okay, Let, let's hear just a little bit from the whistleblower, not the gory details. Okay, when did you first meet him and, and how did you meet? I met him about 10 years ago when I was being trafficked. I um, was on Backpage and he called to um, buy sex for me and I went to the casino and that's how everything started. And okay, so this was paused here. I don't want you to think these two just lead into each other because I, I, I didn't record some of what she said. And then this is just another bit here. You it know? started in August. Yeah, I, and I'm going to be honest. You know, I have a 10-year friendship with this man. Okay, she's, she's been friends with the guy for 10 years. Okay. Recently, John Griffin at okay. CNN was... I, I stopped recording after that because I, I didn't mean to, so th it gets uh, back to her here. He's charged with engaging in unlawful... I do not want this girl to be a victim of, of anything. But again, the bottom line is to save this girl. I tried going to the police. It didn't work. I don't know if it's because you know, my history has tainted it, or if it's because of who he is. Mm -hmm. And that what me, that's what makes me mad, is that these people with power seem to get away with things. I'm not a journalist. Okay, and then this is the end of I what she said. I just want this kid to be safe. Okay. Okay, and hey, that's all good. And I am in no way, shape, or form making light of this subject matter. This is horrific. Okay, this is this. They're, they're right. This this should not go on. However, is this really, really an, an exposure? I mean, here we have. Um, you know, remember the show, To Catch a Predator? Oh <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me see. This was back in um, 2004. This was an episode right here, 2004, and then the episodes five, six. Six, six, and then it goes up to seven, 
and it ends up here at 7. Okay, and then on the Wikipedia page, it says that uh, it was canceled in early 2008. So, you know, it had three or four years on TV over a decade ago. Okay, this is not exactly news. I don't know anybody alive today who does not know that there is kids being abused all over the place, all over this world, every day, including by people they know. But let, let, let's break down what O'Keefe says here. In all of our years in journalism, this is one of the most difficult stories we've ever had to tell. Had to tell? Had? Had? <laughs> there, there's, there's a written rule in, in their book that says, oh, we have to if someone comes to us with a story that's going to affect one child and we're going to help one child, not the children that he mentioned before. As this is about one child. Okay? He had to? What? Had to? He, no, no, he did not have to. Project Veritas chose to do this story. So let's get that straight. There is no had here. This is one of those stories that you never want to hear or report on because it's so unconscionable. It should never happen in civilized society. Okay, except everybody knows for decades now that it's been happening. She mentioned about being on Backpage. Did he say, well, hold on, what's Backpage? Oh, people don't know what Backpage is. Everybody knows what Backpage is. Okay? I mean, Ep Epstein's out. This is out of the woodwork. This is nothing that is an exposure. But tragically, it does. This story involves a man who is currently engaged and living with his fiance and her three young children and his sexual fantasies about the eldest daughter who is in her early teens. Now, we don't usually report on someone's private sexual fantasies. And while we were told a crime is yet to be committed, we couldn't take the chance. Oh. Our source is very- Couldn't take the chance. Some, something bad could happen. Oh, so, something bad could happen. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Very concerned that he might eventually act out on his fantasies. So we verified the information as best we could and took it to the relevant authorities as quickly as possible. Okay, now the information I give them, you don't have to verify it as best you can. It is absolutely 100% easily verifiable. There is no as best we can. Coming on the heels of last week's arrest of CNN producer John Griffin on multiple counts of trying to elicit unlawful sexual activity. Okay, but I'm sorry. What was that keyword in there again? Dr. John Griffin on multiple counts okay. of trying to... Let me see. Coming on the heels of last week's arrest of CNN producer... Did you hear that? The keywords right here to this whole story. ...heels of last week's arrest of CNN producer John... CNN. One of Project Veritas's targets. If you come to Project Veritas with something on big tech... You come to them with something on Facebook. You come to them with something on CNN. The red carpet gets rolled out for you. I, I've told CNN, I mean uh, Project Veritas, in emails, you know, you come to you with something on the Zucks. I called it the Zucks. Zuckerberg and Jeff Zucker. And there is the red carpet. So is this really what it's about? Because... Project Veritas doesn't care about a whole world of children that are going to be impacted. Who knows if climate change is real? Who knows if all the devastating storms are actually, you know, a part of climate change? But the tyranny that is coming based on we don't have solutions is going to affect every child on the planet. So... Just remember that as we go forward here. Griffin, on multiple counts of trying to elicit unlawful sexual activity with minors, the subject of our story is another CNN producer whom had an ongoing relationship with our source 
for over a decade. Another CNN producer, a CNN worker. Imagine that Project Veritas going after CNN or one of its workers, something Project Veritas has a history of. The red carpet comes out for you. When the source came to us, we had some reservations about her history as a former sex worker, which makes her an easy target for anyone who wants to discredit her. You know what? I'm really not discreditable. <laughs> I'm, I'm a decent person. I live a respectable life. And um, you can't argue with the solutions I have. No environmental voice can argue with the solutions I have. They don't have to worry about my credibility. But after spending time with her and vetting the photographs, texts, and FaceTime videos she showed us, we felt compelled we had a duty to take action to protect the children who were involved. Oh, they felt compelled they have a duty to protect the children. Now, there is only one child in this story that is involved, okay? But they don't feel a duty to protect all the children in the world from all the tyranny that is about to come down on the world based on we don't have environmental solutions, even though we're going to see very soon here. Uh, they're about protecting you from medical tyranny. <laughs> What's the difference? Oh, the environment is not their agenda. Project Veritas's agenda. That's the difference. Okay. When did you first meet him and, and how did you meet? I met him about 10 years ago when I was being trafficked. I um, was on Backpage and he called to um, buy sex for me. And I went to the casino and that's how everything started. Okay. And so now everybody knows this because O'Keefe's not like, what's Backpage? What? Okay, she met him over 10 years ago. She met this predator, this CNN producer, over 10 years ago. And he was buying her. Okay? And now, now it's a newsflash. It's, it's a surprise to the world that he's now looking at another kid. Okay? <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is what Project Veritas is, is putting their money into? Why? Because it's CNN. <laughs> right? I, I mean, it, no? No? Oh, okay. Let's leave a question mark there. Okay. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. You it know? started in August. Yeah, I, and I'm going to be honest. You know, I have a 10-year friendship with this man. She's been friends with him for 10 years. A guy who bought her. She was trafficked to him. <laughs> okay. She has a 10-year friendship with him. And now she is uh, amazed that he's attracted to a, a youth, even though it's related to him. <laughs> what? What? This is, th this, this is almost like Jerry Springer. Recently, John Griffin at CNN was charged with engaging in unlawful. I do not want this girl to be a victim of, of anything. But again, the bottom line is this girl, this girl, singular one, this girl. To save this girl, I tried going to the police. It didn't work. I don't know if it's because, you know, my history has tainted it or if it's because of who he is. And that would me that's what makes me mad, is that these people with power seem to get away with things. I know. Oh. oh, people with power seem to get away with things. O'Keefe, did you hear that? Project Veritas, did you hear that? People with power seem to get away with things. I don't know. I, I mean, this guy is a lowly CNN producer. No one knew his name until now. Yet, who is O'Keefe and Project Veritas getting away with being global frauds and we have to listen to them scold us and then they solicit donations from us and rob people of their donation dollars and <laughs> that's just people that of people power people with power seem to get away with things I people of power like Al Gore like the United Nations like 
Barack, <laughs> like, you know, Hollywood, and, and all the environmental voices there, and Trudeau, and that lady in, in New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern, and, you know, very powerful people, the Clintons, and, and you become powerful when you're Bill McKibben, and Mr. B.S. Bernie Sanders, and Oasis Crazy, who is now putting in her Green's newest disaster, which is tyranny coming to your living room, but people of power that Project Veritas and O'Keefe won't stand up to, but they stand up to this unknown CNN producer for one child. <laughs> what? What? While they don't care about all the children in the world being subject to the tyranny of all the powerful environmental voices, Project Veritas and O'Keefe won't actually expose to the world because the world doesn't have a clue that they are all preventing solutions frauds. I'm not a journalist. I just want this kid to be safe. She just wants this kid to be safe. Heartbeat, heartbeat. <laughs> oh my God, just, I, I just want this kid, singular, this one kid, even though O'Keefe referred to him as the children involved in this story. There are no children involved in this story. She just wants that one girl to be safe. I mean, I understand it. She was a victim growing up. I mean, I understand it. And, and uh, this, this is a horrific subject matter. But we're talking about this in terms of Project Veritas and what they have taken on to do in the world, which is to expose frauds and corruption, not criminals, <laughs> okay? But I, I don't know. The only common denominator here is you come to Project Veritas with CNN, the red carpet gets rolled out for you. It's, it's just really, really silly. Now, right here, let me see. Okay, this is um, June 11th. It must be this year because I just, I just actually took this as a screenshot tonight. Oh, June 11th, 2021, because they don't show the year if you're taking it in the year. But right here. Now, I sent this to Project Veritas Tips and PV Legal. And um, John Kerry, we're going to shove a carbon tax down your throats, America. This was a headline. Do you know how much tyranny a carbon tax is? Okay. That, that's just not to the children. No. That's to everyone, but including the children. Okay. I mean, today's kids, when their parents can't afford anything because they're getting shoved down their throat a carbon tax on carbon that all of the environmental voices have refused to prevent for decades, okay? This is a tax on the carbon that all of these fraudulent environmental voices have refused to prevent. And now they're going to shove it down our throats. And Project Veritas, what, huh? Why, why are you bothering us, Eileen? Why, what, 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 what? Okay, but here is Project Veritas's. This guy is named Mario, B-A-L-A-B-A-N. He is their media director. He, he was in, in a video a while back, too. He was on the phone. He was just talking to somebody going, okay, sure, we'll be looking forward to your response, you know. But um, now this is him talking to Alex Jones. And let's listen here. And, uh, you know, we're looking also for whistleblowers who are working in big pharma or whistleblowers working in health agencies, government health agencies. Uh, we're seeing, you know, this this uh, avalanche of mandates and unconstitutional orders taking place across the country. People are reaching out to us desperately, asking for help. How can they, you know, keep their job? How can they, you know, avoid certain fines or all sorts of, of punishment if they don't want to take the vaccine, for example, or uh, the mask mandates? It's, it's truly frightening, and we encourage anyone with information in those institutions, be it uh, health agencies or big pharma, to come forward to us and, and, and you know, help save our country. And help save our country. That, that's what's really important here. We have to help save our country from tyrannical mandates. I don't know, what would be a tyrannical mandate? Um, I don't know, maybe getting carbon taxes shoved down your throat? Uh, for starters, 
for starters, w what are some of the others? We, we played these a little bit ago too, but let's refresh ourselves. Okay, Th this is just one thing that's coming at you. It's tyranny. A credit card, and it's from MasterCard, working with a uh, committee in the United Nations, whose name is too long to remember to pronounce. The United Nations, who has been refusing solutions since the 90s, the mid-90s, okay? Refusing environmental solutions and to significantly reduce our carbon emissions. Uh, but if you make purchases that violate your CO2 credit allocation on your credit card, boop, you're cut off. <laughs> you're saying you got to be kidding. Um, nope. Nope, he is absolutely not kidding. Okay, so just a little more here. Credit card, but beyond that, we have the International Energy Agency. We have a UK government funded report. We have the organs of the United States government all promoting the idea of climate lockdowns. We have climate activists announcing that in a declared climate emergency, you only be able to fly when it's morally justifiable. In other words, you're going to need a, if you want to fly, travel to Florida for a vacation, not going to cut it. If you're going for a funeral, maybe if you've only had one funeral that year, you'll have to justify this. Chuck Schumer is urging Joe Biden right now to declare a national climate emergency. It would turn the United States into a blue state like Cuomo or Mi Whitmer in Michigan where they would suspend elements of democracy and start being able to oppose interstate travel restrictions, all sorts of uh, even dietary restrictions, energy restrictions. We're already getting reports about smart meters, turning people's air conditioner off in the summer if they make it too cold or their heaters off. This is a level of control Americans have never accepted, but the COVID lockdown softened us up and this is what we're headed for. Um, so this is you. Okay, this is what we're headed for. Okay, and it's not just your credit cards. Print, you're gonna be denied. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened there. Hold on, let's start that again. Print, you're gonna be denied. Okay, so let's, here we go. So if you don't go along with the carbon footprint, you're gonna be denied banking, access, access to credit. We have the gov federal government under Joe Biden doing what's called environment social governance. The Department of Treasury is now gonna be withholding um, bank, uh, bank uh, credit ratings to institutions that lend to energy extraction. In other words, unless you're doing the approved what benefits China, solar, wind, or electric car batteries, you're not gonna get money for energy and banking and lending institutions won't be able to give and, it. And Mark, oh, so that sounds pretty tyrannical. And right here, you know what? What did Project Veritas expose in, in this whole big story here? Yeah. One CNN producer that nobody heard of to save one child. <clears throat> okay. Now, right here, yeah, I, I, I do. I, I intend to sue. I was going to do it at the end of summer. I'm crazy busy. And now I, I want them to have their new executive director and development director to be sure that their new staff is on board with, you know, <laughs> Project Veritas not being much of what O'Keefe says he is. But, um, you know, this is who I tell him that can be exposed. Okay, NRDC, Redford Sundance. Bobby Kennedy, McKibben, and his God Earth to 400, Al Gore, and his Climate Unreality Project, completely out of touch with reality, is usually what I call him. Bono's One, Bono's The Rise Fund, along with Laureen Powell Jobs, um, Steve Jobs' wife, her Emerson Collective, the ski industry, <laughs> okay, y you know, um, the Aspen Institute, not protecting our winners, Patagonia, Ted Turner, Bill Gates, Greta, the Livelihood Award, Richard Branson, Leonardo, the Chamber of Commerce, the Green Sports Alliance, Stadium Management, Billy Jean King in the U.S. Tennis Open, Montana State University in Bozeman, Harvard, you know, we're still in, no they're not, you know, the youth environmental groups, Earth Guardians, um, the, the people doing the uh, the the youth climate case that's about to get thrown out, you know, it, it, sunrise movement, extinction rebellion, etc., etc., etc. Propaganda outlets like all the news, including all of today's independent journalists, you know, and I, I mean, you know, 
speaking of journalists, <laughs> you know, God himself, um, now he just nonstop talks about Project Veritas in, in, is journalists. So we're journalists, and, and all the years of journalism is how he started the exposure tonight, you know, and he says you have to stand by the credo of journalism, inform people, you have an obligation and a duty to the people without fear or favor, and, you know, they're about the truth, the one truth, but when it comes to the one environmental truth that there is, that all environmental voices are preventing solutions for odds, and that their inaction, their refusal to give the world solutions, I mean, one, we have to listen to these people, they're just frauds, okay? And they're soliciting donation dollars by the tens of millions per organization a year, Okay, that is that is a, a lot of money that people would donate to more respectable, you know, charities that actually achieve in their field. If only they knew that this entire industry was frauds. But this entire industry, this wall of shame here, um, they. They all get a pass by Mr. Mr. There is one truth. There's one truth. That, that's it. That's it. We are. We are about truth. Project Veritas is truth. And there is only one truth. This is the one environmental truth the world has. And even though tyranny is about to come raining down on not just, you know, kids, but people all over the world, Project Veritas still in... In like nine days, it'll be two and a half years, cannot find it in them to expose all environmental voices. They, they haven't even considered. Yeah, you know, what, what was there? Uh, I didn't, let me see. Oh yeah, th this is what Project Veritas thinks. If, if they decide to explore this, if, if they decide, and this was in May of 2021, this was like seven months ago now, but, but this girl who came to them with, with a, a horrific event, for, but for one child and for one person that nobody ever knew of to be exposed, is, is that really what Project Veritas put themselves in, in business to do? To be, to catch a predator? Or is Project Veritas just doing what Project Veritas does and goes after CNN while giving the entire fraudulent environmental industry who's about to rain tyranny down on everyone, including every kid on this planet, and Project Veritas still can't be bothered to expose it. So are they really doing that good of a job? I don't know. I, you'd be hard-pressed to convince me they are. So stay tuned, people. As I say, um, I am the only person with this truth, and not even Project Veritas will do their job because I'm not exposing CNN. I'm not exposing Facebook. I'm not who their donors allow them to work, even though they have no agenda. Oh, they have no agenda. They let, Let's remind ourselves of that one more time here. Yeah. W what is it they're doing? And, uh, you know, we're looking also for whistleblowers who are working. We're looking for. We're looking for. That is people that have an agenda, regardless of what James O'Keefe tells you otherwise. So stay tuned, people.